This is a Tallahassee update from the Florida Retail Federation. Good Friday afternoon, everybody. Florida Retail Federation has had a very busy week this week, and we've got some great news to report to you. Our Main Street Fairness Act bill was finally heard in the Senate, not just in one committee, but in two committees. Yesterday morning, it was heard in the Finance and Tax Committee. Uh, Senator Evelyn Lynn did a fantastic job presenting the bill, followed up by our CEO, Rick McAllister, who gave a great uh, presentation on the bill as well. This has been a major issue for us. Uh, it's an issue of fairness. Uh, in our mind, it's not about the taxes collected, it's about the competitive nature of our business. The retail industry has changed over the years, and we now have all sorts of ways to deliver retail products. One of the most exciting ones is on the Internet. We love the Internet. We think it's great. All of our members are engaged in Internet commerce. So all of our members collect the tax as well. And so all we are, have, have said for all this time is we don't care what you do with the money. If there is any money, we don't care what you do with it. Just uh, don't get in the business of picking winners and losers in the marketplace. We know that that's not your intent. You kind of inherited this, uh, but we need your help to fix it. But now, the way you have crafted the bill in the committee, it is saying not only do we get that money in, we are able to find a way to return it to taxpayers who right now are absolutely struggling. No jobs, no money barely making it to stay in their homes and put food on the table. This is a very important piece of legislation at this time. I thank you. I think you've been very wise in considering it in workshop, and I hope that uh, action will be taken to pass this bill. And uh, then later on in the afternoon, Senator Nancy Dieter heard it in the Commerce and Tourism Committee. So we've got some footage we want to take you to from both of those committees and uh, show you what's going on in the Senate. This is something that certainly Florida Retail Federation supports. Uh, I've seen the fairness of it. People who purchase things on the internet by existing Florida statutes are supposed to be uh, remitting tax to the state of Florida. This is a collection problem. This is something we've worked on all our lives, it seems like, for at least the last 10 years. So we, we really appreciate your, your support and hope hopefully we can get something done this year. Thank you very much. We would, I hope you would vote this bill out. Also going on this week, we were finally able to come to an agreement with the Florida Medical Association on our pharmacist immunization bill. House Bill 509 by Representative Reva Slogan is expected to be on the House Health Care Committee agenda next Tuesday. We've spent the week working with the Florida Medical Association on their concerns regarding increasing the types of vaccinations administered by pharmacists. We were able to come to an agreement with the Florida Medical Association which will allow pharmacists to to begin administering the pneumonia vaccine without a prescription, administer the shingles vaccine with a prescription, and additionally, the amended language provides for the Florida Medical Association to provide continuing education credits for immunizing pharmacists. The Senate Companion, Senate Bill 850 by Senator Ulrich, did receive an additional committee assignment this week. It now has two more stops prior to going to the Senate floor. This was almost certainly a maneuver to ensure that there would be an agreement reached between us and the FMA. We're confident that it will move through these committees now that a deal has in fact been reached. Also going on this week in the Beauty Industry Council, House Bill 887 by Representative Ingram passed out of the House Government Operations Appropriations Subcommittee on Tuesday. The sponsor in the Department of Business and Professional Regulation are working with FRF's Beauty Industry Council regarding makeup certification requirements and barbering services outside of a barber shop. Before the bill is heard in its next committee stop, the House Economic Affairs Committee, the department will present new language regarding the industry's concerns. And in the Retail Beverage Council this week, House Bill 615 by Representative Horner in its original form would have extended credit to retail dealers of tobacco products, but at the same time establish a delinquent list issued by the Division of Alcohol, Beverage and Tobacco for delinquent credit payment transaction of tobacco retail dealers, very similar to credit law regulation provisions for alcoholic beverages. The bill also had significant negative fiscal impact on state trust funds. In lieu of the bill's original language, we worked with the tobacco wholesalers to help them recover taxes paid on delinquent retail accounts without creating another burdensome, problematic delinquent list maintained and enforced by the division. 
in the House Business and Consumer Affairs Committee this week. The bill was changed to allow, at the discretion of the wholesale dealer making the sale, credit for the sale of tobacco products may be extended to a retailer, retail dealer. Another controversial amendment also passed in the committee that basically bans roll your own tobacco stores. These stores are selling tobacco products at a very reduced price by avoiding state cigarette taxes. The Senate bill by Senator Hayes, SB 1008, has not been heard in committee. We are appreciative of the wholesalers and House sponsor of finding an alternative to the creation of a state delinquent list. And in the Grocery Council, as we mentioned last week, there are two bills pending which would restrict Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. This week, the House version, HB 1401 by Representative Plakin, was heard on Monday by the House Health and Human Services Access Subcommittee. It ran into serious le legislative opposition and barely passed on an 8-6 to six vote. Representative Plakin has indicated that he will address most of the concerns. We're awaiting drafts of the new language. It has two more committee stops before it can go to the House floor. That's it for this week's report. Happy weekend, everybody, and we'll see you next week.